Welcome to another video with my F9. Today we're gonna fix some things. So in my last video you could see that the engine is already running um, and the electricity is working, so the lights are working and indicators and things, but um, the problem is that the radiator is still empty, so that's why we can't run the engine for a very long time. So I'm gonna take the radiator out today and um, then I'm going to test if the radiator is leaking or not. We need to renew all these, um, all these cooling pipes here and hoses and um, hopefully we have a working cooling system afterwards. So this is a cooling system without um, water pump. So the radiator sits higher than the engine. The hot air of, or the hot water of the engine comes out here goes through the radiator, while it's cooling it's sinking down and then going back to the engine. So a very simple water cooling system. And also another very important system for the engine to run is the fuel tank. Because um, as you could see in my last video I built myself such a little um, uh, fuel tank just to start the engine for a short time. Because the original fuel tank is still full of, or well not full, but there is still some old fuel inside, it's quite dirty inside. Um, I'm going to take the fuel tank out as well and I will clean it inside. There is the fuel stopcock in the interior. Um, I will disassemble that one, make sure that it works and then we also renew the uh, fuel pipes to the carburetor which is running along the side here to the carburetor down here. So you can see the, the black pipe here. So we will renew that. I also want to install a fuel filter and then we should have a running engine with a working fuel system and a working cooling system. So I quickly want to show you this is this kind of adapter pipe that they built because the engine doesn't really fit this radiator and there's a hole. So probably there was water standing inside and it's all rusty so I will just throw this away and build something new. I quickly want to show you these old style clamps. So there's a bolt in the middle which is holding this metal band here and you can just rotate this with a screwdriver and this is how you fix this pipe. Okay, so the radiator is out. It uh, wasn't quite as straightforward as I thought. Um, basically there are two screws, uh, one down there and one over there. For this one here, to reach this one, I needed to take the air filter out, which is sitting here at the side, and you can see this hole in the bracket for the air filter and the cable for the shock, so for the starter, uh, for the start function of the carburetor is going through here, so I needed to disconnect that and take the air filter out, and then it was quite easy to reach this one. That was the easy one. Um, not so easy was the one over here, because um, it's quite busy in this area, so you have the uh, exhaust here, there's the cooling pipe down there, the um, connector of the radiator for the cooling pipe is in the way and also there's your throttle here underneath. So I can show you this here. So this mechanism here is the throttle, so which is also in the way, so you can't really reach it with the tool. Um, but in the end it worked, it got out. And uh, now we can see this box, which is actually quite rusty and filthy. Uh, we will clean all of that, make it pretty and put it back together. But what it does is basically the hot air which comes out of the main water radiator goes through here and is being heated up again. And again without a pump, so the hot water goes in here, the cold water comes out here and then it's reconnected to the main radiator. And then the air from this box is flowing down here and then into the interior. This is the fuel tank, so it goes underneath the fuel tank and then to the interior. And uh, here we have the sensor. So this is actually the pipe that connects the main radiator to this um, heater box. And this is where our coolant temperature sensor sits. So quite an easy system, quite nice, quite easy to uh, disassemble if you can reach all the screws. And uh, now we can continue. Okay, so next step. I just removed the interior radiator, so that is a small separate radiator that's sitting behind the main radiator. So the air that's coming out of the main radiator warm will go through this one again 
in this direction. And we have the two connectors here, the warm one above and the cold one below. And this will heat the air even more and then it will flow into the interior. And this is why we have this hole here where we can see the pedal box. And um, one interesting thing here is that we have this pipe going through the, um, through the fuel tank. Um, not sure if you can look through here, but this is for the um, original other kind of shifting that this car had. So you have a straight stick sticking through here and then the gearbox is right underneath here. This is for front axle and the steering. And uh, this is how you would usually shift the gears. My car has the other system, which is now at the steering wheel. So right next to the steering column, we have this shifting mechanism here. But you can see both versions in this car. And yeah, so the next step is to remove the fuel tank. Um, I will also remove the like the fuel stop cork, clean that one. The fuel pipe, which is along the side here. And uh, we'll make the fuel tank pretty and then we can assemble that again. Also, it's quite good right now. Um, we have a bit more space in this whole area, so we can see pretty nicely how everything's built. So you can see the, the leaf spring, the transversal leaf spring right here. You see that the gearbox is behind the front axle. You can see that the bell housing is actually here, so in front of the front axle. As we learned before, this is something that Audi only changed in 2008 or 2007 when the Audi A4 B8 came out. Um, until then, they kept that system with the bell housing in front of the axle and the clutch in front of the front axle. And um, the good thing now is also that we can reach the main um, brake stuff um, pretty nicely. So we have the pedal there, we have the main a brake cylinder there and we can reach all the pipes so we can also sort this stuff out now. So there it is, that is our radiator. Let's have a look around here. So this is the back side and we can still see here where the uh, box for the interior heating was connected. Um, these are the two connectors for the interior heating. Um, here at the side we have the overflow pipe which just goes down. And at the front, um, the, net, the net looks like this. And we will now clean everything and see if this whole thing is still okay or if it's leaking. Um, the nice thing is that this whole radiator is in such a frame. So you can see here, this is the radiator and it's in such a frame here. And you basically fix the frame with the car. And because of that, the radiator is quite nicely protected. You also have this little protection plate here, so that's pretty good. Inside here, as you can see, it is dirty, but it looks okay. So there is a chance that this is still okay and not leak. Okay, so I closed all the inlets and outlets of the radiator now. And let's pour some water inside and uh, see if it's leaking or not. So the radiator is full of water now. I just put this behind it so it can't fall over and it is leaking. But of course it's leaking from where I just closed that, but I didn't do it very properly, I guess. So it's fine, I was expecting that. Important is that it doesn't leak from the net. So we can see nothing from the net here. Everything's okay here. And uh, you can see how it looks inside. Still a bit uh, filthy and dirty, but um, 
we will wash this radiator a couple of times and then it's gonna be fine. Um, you can see inside here these pipes. So these are these little pipes that run vertically through the radiator and then these horizontal elements are just there to increase the surface so you can um, eject more heat. And it looks like our radiator is fine. So we can now concentrate on building a new adapter pipe and then put it back into the car. And actually all of that is dirt. You see? I will just very carefully clean this and brush it. And then it's gonna be nice again. I even want this metal plate straight again. I hate it when they are bent on all kinds of radiators. Because you get less air for your radiator, you have worse cooling, and it just looks bad. And one thing I want to show you are these little round elements um, here in these horizontal elements, see? because they are creating some turbulences, they are shuffling air down, and turbulences in the radiator mix the air again, and um, you have better cooling performance, because otherwise the air will just get hot close to the surface, somewhere there, and the air in the middle will stay cool, but it doesn't reach the metal parts, so you create some turbulences inside the radiator to have better cooling. I quickly want to show you something. So um, that is a cooling system without a reservoir. The reservoir is basically the radiator. So you fill the radiator here at the top. And in this lid, you have the overflow pipe. But there is the second lid here, which then seals here first. And before the water can get to the overflow pipe, which you can see here at the side, here's the hole for it, um, it has to push this second lid up. And there is a spring usually. The spring is broken here. Um, why do we have a spring here? Because in cooling systems we want to build a certain pressure, which is usually around three and a half bar. Um, if we have a certain pressure like this, we can avoid boiling of the cooling system for a bit longer. So the cooling system can actually run at 110, 120 degree instead of boiling at 100 degree. So since this spring is broken, my cooling system on this car can't do it. So it will just boil as usually, so like at 100 degree. But I think for this kind of vehicle, for the beginning, it's fine. I know what it is and maybe sooner or later I will find a new lid to replace this one or I can change the spring maybe. Um, yeah, but this is the function of this lid here. It's not just a simple lid, there's a spring inside and it's to keep the pressure in the system. So just want to show you guys what I'm doing here right now. I washed the radiator so it's relatively clean right now. And now I was drying it. So I'm just um, blowing air through it to dry it. And now I'm bending all these little fins back so they are straight. So I already did this side just with two little screwdrivers. And it's actually quite a nice job. It's really cool. It's really satisfying if you go here and then just straighten all of them it's so really nice and uh, it takes a lot of time but it's really fun to do that and soon this whole thing will look better and while i'm at it what happens if these fins are bent so if there's something like this or worse even like this then less air is going through your radiator, which means that you have less cooling. And um, also, if these things break out, so if you don't have that anymore, like we have it here on the other side, then you have less surface area to get rid of the heat. So over the lifetime of a car, the cooling is getting worse and worse because you always have stone chips or you have like little insects or you have any kind of damage and these things are bent and your cooling is getting worse over the lifetime. So little fun fact at the side, um, when I was working for a big German car manufacturer with turbocharged all-wheel drive supercars, um, 
there were some guys in the workshop who liked to bend these fins and wrote their name inside. Um, which is obviously not a good thing to do, especially in the delivery center for new cars. And it's making the radiator worse. In that case, it was the intercooler, it was behind the rear wheels, and if the car is on the lift, you can see it. So um, this is reducing the efficiency of your radiator. And in Formula One, we were protecting these radiator nets as soon as the cover came off and the guys were working on the cars. There are some protection covers for this. You can also just use cardboard or anything just to protect these radiator nets because if less air is going through them, they are less efficient. So this is just making your whole cooling worse. So there are four spots that I want to fix. So I want to use my solenoid iron um, to fix these spots here. So the first one is this holder here. See, it's, it's broken here. Uh, so I'm going to fix that. Then uh, we have the bump here. It's not leaking yet, but it looks very uh, at a very high risk to leak. And also this one. And then here is a small hole. You can see this. It's not leaking here, but I just want to close that. And now the radiator is ready. So it doesn't leak. It's working. Um, I fixed all the spots around here. And now I also painted it. Also the Radiator net looks quite nice again. Um, of course, we still have these broken old pieces here at the back, but the radiator works. And this is just where it's connecting to the interior heating box. And uh, yeah, so now we can basically use it in the car again. So let's quickly have a closer look at this thing. So um, I wanted to show you this climatization system of this F9. Um, because this is how you can get the warm air into the interior. As we just said, you can see that someone put some carpet in here. And then this stick here is your control. <laughs> so you can just close that thing, so no hot air. If you do that, then the hot air will exit downwards um, into the engine bay and then towards the gearbox. And that is all there is, basically. So there's warm air coming out here. You can open and close it like this. There's some seals around here and we will now make this thing pretty and um, do the same as what we did with the main radiator. So we will try if this is um, leaking or not and yeah, then we can put it back in. So also this interior heater is ready to go back in the car now. So I tested if it was leaking. It's not leaking. The radiator net is pretty good because it's pretty well protected in that position. Um, I just um, like rubbed it down all around and uh, painted it a little bit and uh, now it's good to go. Okay, so I removed the fuel line. As you can see, the fuel tank is uh, sitting just behind the dashboard, so just underneath here. Um, that is not the actual fuel tank, that's only the, um, the panel. Um, to the engine bay, but the fuel tank has exactly the same shape and is sitting above here. This is our fuel stopcock, the same like in the Trabant, it's just hanging in the interior here um, instead of the engine bay. And uh, I just removed this fuel line here, which is then going through that hole um, to the front, to the carburetor, and I'm going to remove the uh, fuel stopcock now, and there's still going to be some fuel inside, so it's going to be a bit filthy here. But I already have my jelly can here, so I can um, catch everything. And um, after that, we should be able to remove the fuel tank. So I took the um, stop cork out. This is the fuel line that runs to the front, to the carburetor. It's actually not a rubber piece, it's really a pipe. Um, there's just a short rubber piece for the um, forward section to connect it to the carburetor. And then I took the two, these two straps out. Um, they basically hold the fuel tank in place. So the fuel tank is still sitting here. And uh, now we're gonna take it out. Um, the sensor here on top is the fuel uh, level sensor. I already disconnected that one. And now let's take it out.
Okay, so in summary, what have we done so far? We took the radiator out, we furbished that one, so that's ready to go back into the car, but we leave it outside because we need the space for now. Um, we took the interior heater out, we furbished that one, that's also ready to go back in. And um, we also took the fuel tank out. The fuel tank is uh, back inside right now because I don't want it flying around in the workshop right now. So I just leave it in the car when I'm not working on the car. Um, but we will um, refurbish the fuel system. That's the next step. So clean the fuel tank from inside, make it pretty outside, um, the fuel stopcock and also the fuel line. And um, then we have enough space inside the engine bay to reach the brake system. So the next step will be to refurbish the brake system. And I think we have to renew just everything around there. So see you at the next video.